Admiral's log. The tides of war have shifted dramatically in our favor. The German Navy, once a formidable and seemingly invincible force, has suffered a catastrophic defeat. Nearly all of their imposing battleships now lie at the bottom of the ocean, their might shattered by the relentless strength and strategy of the Chinese Navy. Yet the hostilities are far from over. Even as we celebrate this monumental victory, a portion of the German fleet remains active and defiant. They are reacting swiftly and aggressively to our recent naval landing in German New Guinea, determined to thwart our efforts to secure this strategic territory. The situation demands our immediate attention and unwavering resolve. Our forces must be prepared to face this remnant of the German Navy with the same courage and determination that led us to victory in the previous battles. The landing at German New Guinea is a critical operation, one that will further solidify our dominance in the region and cripple the last vestiges of German resistance. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to episode 38. I believe in the two previous episodes I humiliated the Germans enough. Unfortunately, this is not the case. The Germans are back, this time around to defend Friedrich Wilhelmshaven, which is what I'm invading. They really don't appreciate that, so they have sent the BB-87, another one of those Bayerns with 17-inch guns, and the Friedrich der Große, which is far smaller. It's a battle cruiser with a couple of 13-inch guns. Of course, these guys come with their own friends, and they're a party. Heavy cruisers, light cruisers, destroyers... It's a party. What I have to throw against them is one Cursed Fish class, one of the new 38 Tills battle cruisers, and a couple of, well, escorts. That is going to be tough. Torpedoes might even the odds a bit, so as opposed to previous, I'm going to have the Cursed Fish launch as quickly as possible. And yes, there's a lot of destroyers in the way. With sonar, they will see the torpedoes. Yet, whether the AI will be able to dodge, that remains to be seen. Immediately as the battle starts, the guns erupt. Let's have these guys do what they do best. I'm gonna have some of these ships just kind of following or at least not getting in the way of the Guangwen. The Guangwen is the torpedo capable warship but she has to get closer first. This is the dangerous part. She's gonna come under pressure from most likely the 17 inchers and as those shells impact my ship it is very likely I'll start to lose torpedoes. Interesting overpen there. That was really accurate shell fire from, I think, the Guan Wen. Yeah. The Guan Wen already hit a destroyer that happened to be in the way. Knocking out <laughs> its conning tower. <laughs> Excellent. We also have some of the light cruisers here. The new light cruisers. The Lanky Git and the Zhu Zhao. These light cruisers armed with a couple of 6-inch guns. Some torpedoes to deal with, well, um, spreads of units, which are definitely present here. The two DDs are ancient. They are capable of launching torpedoes, but only out to 9 kilometers. These things are still using the older Mark IV torpedoes, and they're only 21 inch. So these are not that likely to be useful, but maybe in a distractionary role can still perform some effect. As for the battlecruiser Chan Jin, it's not exactly a small battlecruiser. This thing displaces 60,000 tons, operates at 32 knots, and has 18-inch Mark IV guns. Dangerous, dangerous weapons. And I am expecting to use those to great effect against the enemy battleship. I feel that is the easiest target to hit, especially at this range. Uh, the Guangwen, with all of its torps, well, you're just going to have to rush in. And they are actually doing better speed than the DDs. So being able to keep a smoke screen around this ship, well, sadly isn't quite going to happen. Torpedo range, 21 clicks. Targets, a plenty. Let's get in there and deal some more damage against the Germans. Ideally, the war would have ended by now. And especially considering the state of my ships, uh, or rather the uh, increasing lack thereof, that would have been preferable. But sadly, they are still eager for more. Or rather, they're not that eager for me to take over their ports. I can appreciate that. I would not be eager for me to take over there or to <laughs> for the enemy to take over my ports. Yet here we are. Um, target. 
pretty much anything in here is fair game. But of course, the battleship is the prize. Anything that happens to get in the way before the torpedoes get there, well, bonus. As for the target for the heavy cruiser, uh, just target this, give or take a few. The light cruisers are going to be getting into range relatively soon. Yeah, here we are. Maybe I can add some more torpedoes to the fray. Can you guys actually split up a little? Because you're just ramming into each other now. Don't torp yet. Don't torp yet. Quan Wen. Send it. I'll never get tired of that. Hard to port. Best turn. And prepare to torpedo them again. Get ready with the other salvos. Oh, hold on. There's a couple of launchers that haven't actually done much. It's these quintuples. That's another 15 torps I can throw into the fight. But they have a bit of a picky angle to them. They need to be a bit... micromanagey, I think. Please tell me my torpedo launchers aren't stuck. That would be unfortunate. Okay, I'm not going to wait for that. I have to turn before this thing takes a whole lot of damage and starts losing torpedo launchers. This is going to definitely hit somebody and ruin their day. As for the torpedo launchers here, not yet in range. Light cruisers, in range, but hugging each other. Which is not what I need. I need to just slow down. Uh, Lanky Kit is capable of launching. So let's have her do just that. The target's over there. Uh, that is you. Launch. Smoke yourself up. This thing can dump, what, 10 torps in the water? I think. Hello? Yeah, five. Fine, every little bit helps. Zhuzhao. Wait for Lanky Kit to pass. And then Torp. We're gonna do a bit of crowd control here. Torps away. Torps away. Perfect. Now you guys can rejoin the division. And start heading away a bit. And picking off a couple of destroyers. That's what you do best. As for the Guanwen. Uh, the port side torpedoes are now away. And it's looking like an enormous set of fanfire. The starboard side is still available, so I'm once again going to swing the ship around. Chan Jin, engaging the battleship, yet not getting anywhere. Um, well, somebody's getting hit. At this point, the fleet has probably detected the wall of skill of torpedoes coming at them, and is getting a little worried. We have some of the DDs, which are also in range. You are going to prioritize the big guy. And start getting the hell out of here. Torpedo launched. No, that's... Yeah, that's a torpedo launch. I'm not sure exactly what they're targeting, but it's not me. You're going to have a bad time. Oh, you're going to have a doubly bad time, because you're getting sandwiched by the enemy torpedoes as well. That's a big, nice casualty. I think we're going to have to do some hit and running here. Emphasis on the running. Quickly. Yeah, definitely some hits here, some hits there. And we're not done yet. There's more targets about, but we're not getting the battleship. Oh, you're also torpedoing. That's uh, considerate. Especially considering you're not torping me, but your friends. All the better. Ah, you got torps out. You got torps out. Perfect. Get out. Chun Jin. Increase speed to flank and run. Guan Wen. If possible... No, not possible. You don't have any torps anymore. Run. I know you can do 30 knots, give or take. Let's go do that. There's another cruiser killed off. You just got a torpedo. That's inbound for me. This is half and half inbound. There's inbounds and there's outbounds. At this point, I'm not sure who's actually... Doing any torpedoing and who's getting torpedoed. 
These appear to be the 20 inch torpedo, 21 inches from the destroyers. You're not gonna survive that hit, most like. Torp hit. How many torpedoes have you actually hit? You've landed 15 hits. I consider that a win. 17 hits. 18 hits. These things are fantastic crowd controllers. Fortunately, the German fleet still needs a bit more damage. And especially that battleship is not taking any damage. There goes a light cruiser. Whatever, we're just going to start targeting all these small units. Never mind the battleship. The battleship should at this point be arriving at the same place as my torps. Yep, here they are. That's the wall from the destroyers. So as much as you want to try and duck and cover, it's too little and it's too late. And you cannot hide behind your dead ally. <clears throat> One, two... Torpedo hit on the battleship. A bit of damage here. This destroyer is desperately trying to turn away. There's another torp hit on the cruiser. She's gone. And another on another cruiser. And another on the light cruiser. Chan Jin has done 26,000 points of damage. The Guan Wen has done a little under 600,000 points of damage. Thank you. 27 torpedo hits. The destroyer has done 20k. The other destroyer has done 68k with only two torps. I think it's time to beat a retreat here. Where's my heavy cruiser at? Oh, hi. You're not in a very good way. Uh, aggressively launch. Yep, and off you go. We did what we came here to do, which is murder half the German fleet, and now we're going to just disengage. Because this is going to be an expensive thing to recover from. Hit and run. Chan Jin, with her 8-inch guns, should be able to do quite a bit of work against some of these smaller targets. The 18 inchers are a bit cruel to use against these things, but maybe it's more of a mercy in the way that how fast these things get killed off. That's another torpedo landed. <laughs> and of course, um, the torpedoes that I'm trying to count are only mine. I'm not counting exactly the amount of damage that the AI has done with torpedoes. Because the damage that the AI has done with torpedoes is added to my own. Which is a bit weird, because it's, I think, damage considered to be done by blue, if you want to call it like that, as opposed to the red team. Um, it's a bit weird, the way that the AI calculates that, but whatever. I don't mind it. Range, about 20, 24 clicks. I think they're chasing the cruiser, which is good news. Allows the Guan Wen to escape. Bad news if you were the heavy cruiser. Now, this DD is having a very, very eager run at it. Supposedly doing 36 knots. Practically doing 40, 41. My ships do it, so I don't really mind it. That's their battleship. Oh, some damage. Some damage. Come on. Make a stand. Boom. Don't you dare approach me, sir. Yeah, that'll end it. <laughs> Never mind. Got the destroyer as well. As for my ships, I think the ones still under threat are the DDs. And that's mostly because one of them has taken quite a bit of water on board. 13 Stalag getting a bit of an indoor pool. Unrequested. It's not a, a refit that I approved. And unfortunately, we got no smoke left to try and cover her escape. So I'm going to have every ship make, and make a go for itself and just try and disengage. Guan Wen is disengaging. Chan Jin, also disengaging. Range should be about 20 to 30. Yeah, we're good. Losses, um, one destroyer most likely and one heavy cruiser. Damage done, little over 1.2 million and that is including their own torpedoes. The 18 inchers are going to be thundering for a while. 
considering I got about 60 kilometer, no, 55 kilometer range. So that's fine. But I don't really expect to be able to hit a whole lot of stuff. Not at this range. So I'd say, pretty good victory. Not strictly in the sense that we sunk very expensive targets, but we definitely crippled a lot of them. And the Germans are going to take a lot of time repairing a lot of their ships, insofar as they have repairable ships. So let's have a look at the score. I sunk nine ships. Not bad. I only lost two myself. I lost the Zhijuan and the 13 Stalag 13. So for a total of 17,000 victory points, it's actually less than expected. I'll just add that to the tally of the, I don't know, slightly over a million points that I have right now. They have lost the heavy cruiser Wuppertal and Prince Heinrich. Um, the battleship and the battle cruiser were largely unharmed. A light cruiser took a couple of hits. The DDs took some hits. I think most of the damage is to the German Ego, um, which is also quite valuable. And of course, their shipyards, um, not so much as damaging their shipyards per se, but, well, they're going to be busy building a lot of ships, and now they're also going to be busy repairing half their fleet. So I definitely consider that to be a big win. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if with this enemy fleet in my surroundings, I'm going to have a very good chance of invading. Thankfully, that might be a moot point. Because if we can go to peace with the Germans, I can probably get that territory as reparations for the war. So let's have a look. No, you're not going to buy any new ships right now. Because I'm a little busy trying to keep everybody together. Yeah. <laughs> Tonnage needed. 1.1 million. Why? German fleet. German fleet. Uh, gentlemen, we are out of here. We're going to go back to Lorengau. Or Kavien. Yeah, Lorengau. Let's go here and lick our wounds. Um, and see if the Germans are actually going to make peace. As for my capability to build new ships, unfortunately, it's a bit limited. It's a bit limited. I only have 41 active ships. It's not as many as I would like. I'm going to have to wait until my shipyards continue to increase in size and until some of the ships actually get re well done repairing. Some of these are going to take three to four months, uh, probably some longer. And of course, in seven months, we can get another couple of light cruisers. As for my... Yeah. Oh, my armor logistics actually didn't take a hit there. 12%. The Germans, however, 163 ships still. We might have sunk a couple of their light cruisers and DDs, but there is plenty, plenty more where that came from. So I really hope that we can end the war with the Germans. As for the other two wars that I have going on, the British and the Spanish. The Spanish seem to have quite a bit of a temper. I'm not exactly sure what I did to deserve that. Because I didn't exactly piss them off. Um, but now that they have pissed me off, the army decides to take a march. It's just that they either just started or are getting absolutely nowhere. Um, yeah, these guys are going to have a bit too much resistance. These guys, not as much. This is weird. The one time in Germany is assisting, and the other time it's not. Oh well. Um, that's not that big of a deal. I think the Spanish don't really have a fleet. 42 ships? Where did you conjure that up? What the hell? They're definitely less advanced than I am, but still. And the Brits? 19 ships? Really? Surprising. Okay. Um, also surprising is that the German GDP is doing all sorts of weird things. Let's see if they want to make peace. I'm going to take some more of the territory. After a bit more pushing and shoving, the Germans have finally relented. Considering our massive amount of victory points, it's time to go shopping yet again. Now, I have 6 billion in reparations that I can claim from the Germans. I can even claim some of their warships, but no thank you. As for the rest of their territories, now we're getting somewhere. Um, I can almost, <laughs> almost liberate the Netherlands. Um, only to promptly have it invaded by the Germans yet again. And with my army at, what, 12%, 13%, I don't think it's really going to push back against the German invasion that much. Although I would be very interested in seeing the, the Chinese suddenly set 15 million Chinese afoot in the Netherlands as an army that spawns out of nowhere. Um, as for the German New Guinea territory, it's still too expensive. 
It's really annoying. It's just too expensive. So, um, what can I do? What can I grab and what would be interesting? I think based on the way that it's going and the way that I'm expanding, having more territory in Africa could be useful. Portugal. <clears throat> yeah, Portugal is actually useful. Um, it is, of course, part of Europe, or at least Chinese Europe after this. And it would allow me to walk into Spain. Invading Spain with a naval invasion is exceptionally hard to do. Invading them land to land might actually be possible. I don't care about Madeira. Um, let's take Cameroon. Let's take Gold Coast, Equatorial New Guinea, Portuguese New Guinea, or Portuguese Guinea. Uh, Nigeria, if you don't mind, I would also take the Central African Republic. I will take Burma off your hands. Um... Yeah, I'm rich, why not? Andaman Islands. No, I don't exactly know where they are. Yeah, we'll get some, some pocket change. Nice. <clears throat> okay, they definitely gifted me all of that. Uh, masses of disified... Whatever. Of course, we're not going to do much about that, except disperse the crowd. This is going to cause some unrest, but my unrest is 7.5. It's fine. My naval prestige is 8,500. Almost 8,600. I can definitely afford to lose two points. I can also go the official route, quell all the unrest, and uh, spend four and a half billion doing that. Of course not. We're China. We're not doing that. So, <clears throat> Portugal. Let's go have a look. Yes, Germany and France are also at it. That's fun. Portugal. What's the state of affairs here? We have um, a decent population. Our army force isn't that sizable. But it is possible that we're going to see a land invasion from Portugal to northern Spain or western Spain. That would be funny. That would be really funny. Of course, my, um, <laughs> my army logistics is um, not great. It's 11%. Considering all the territories that I now have, I'm not very surprised... Because I have a lot of territory to defend, and not a whole lot of ships to do it with. Because my territory has to be defended by a total fleet of 50 ships. That, I understand, is problematic. Now, of course I want to have more battleships, but judging by the amount of um, cruisers that have been killed recently, I think it makes only more sense to get a couple more mecha medics designed. Uh, well, built, that is. And, of course, the best way to go about that is to take a copy of the most recent variant, potentially upgrade that somewhat, and then build a couple of those. So I think this is going to be the Mechamedic uh, 4 flight, and that's potentially going to be the ultimate version of this ship. Because there isn't that much more to unlock, there's not that much more to research, there's not much more to upgrade. This is pretty much as good as it's going to get. Now, as for the gear that they have aboard, um, yeah, like it's, it's, I can maybe upgrade them to modern two, giving me just a bit more resistance. We're going from ten to twelve and a half. Like it's, it's not that big of a deal. You're getting another ten percent armor quality jump. Weight wise, I think it changes nothing. Yeah, weight wise, it changes absolutely nothing. Double hull bottom, anti torp three. Um, they already have all the gear that I want, except maybe for red range finder three. Even that doesn't change the weight on the ship. Torpedo launchers, um, auto loaders. I'm surprised I don't have auto two yet. Must be a really expensive research project. As for the rest, um, increased shells, so they should never run out. But I think many of the mecha medics that I had didn't quite get the refit to the most modern version. We have 200% armor quality. I can add like a bit more to the belt, but this is the belt maxed out. So a bit more on the superstructure, and we are perfect. So, save that design, <clears throat> copy that design to the Flight 4, and start building a few of those. A few months later, as I'm just minding my own business, and upgrading my own ships, and rebuilding my fleet, I'm getting the notification that France has dissolved due to economic collapse. This is a pretty important situation. This is going to be something that might really be a critical changer on the whole battlefield. 
Because the way that this now opens up Europe to attack... Oh, look, Cochin China is open up for grabs. Um, the way that this opens up Europe, especially these extremely high-value territories, means that it's possible for Germany to get right in there and conquer France. If they do that, that would be somewhat problematic. Because the Germans themselves aren't exactly weak at the moment. They still have 180 ships. Again, they've been building a lot of smaller stuff, but they still have three battleships. I really am not that eager to engage them, at least not in the current state. I have nine battleships, so I have been rebuilding, but it's going to take a while longer. Sadly, because I'm constantly at war with two nations that they essentially can't fight, because they barely have any ships, this means that I'm not gaining any victory points, I'm not losing any victory points, so there's no way to go to peace with these people. The war with Spain has developed somewhat in the Western Sahara over here. We are moving in with a couple of uh, hundred thousand men here and a couple hundred thousand men there. But with both there and my army uh, logistics being very bad, these <laughs> offensives really don't go anywhere. So we're just kind of, I don't know, sitting over there, staring at each other and not really doing much of anything. So in the meanwhile, I've taken up a hobby of going after the SGS, uh, sorry, SGSSI, as well as the uh, area over, oh, actually over here now. Um, I did have a couple ships here. So let's have the Guan Wen and friends meet up over there. It's 50,000 tons and I can take Cochin China. 1.7 billion, not a bad grab. Cambodia and Annam. Yes, I would very much like that. So I can consolidate my hold on the whole area here. Quan uh, Chan Wow, uh, sorry, Quan Chao One would also be nice for 1.5 billion. We got the northeast frontier over here. Uh, there's still some. Well, I mean, these are ungoverned, these are not. Pakistan is Soviet Union. Oman is now Soviet Union? How'd they pull that off? British Somaliland is not exactly British. It's uh, again held by the Soviets. How are the Soviets doing? I haven't heard from them in ages. They have a $56 billion economy, which is mostly a joke. They have 55 ships that I'm... I don't know. I'm not exactly sure how they're affording these navies because they seem to swap admirals at an alarming rate. Like, they change their admirals uh, very, very often because they constantly get the warning, oh, you went over budget. Yeah, fine, I'll just hire a new admiral and the slate will be wiped clean. And seemingly nations can just do that without really suffering any consequences. As for my ships, I have been modernizing all the mechamedics. Um, these are the Flight 1, sorry, the, the original ones, the OGs. I also have a couple of the Flight 4s coming up. I got the Flight 3s, which need refitting. Uh, the Flight 2 still needs a bit of refitting as well. I am looking to refit the Zhegong, and I'm constantly building up my shipyard, but the shipyards are very, very busy. And of course, especially building up those new battleships, that just takes time. Unfortunately, there's not really a whole lot I can do to speed that up. Yet, um, with me just refusing most of the time to be building out ships for other nations, I am getting more and more and more ships. I've been definitely building a lot of these Lankigets, which are an ideal counter to the large destroyer force that some of these nations have that I might fight later. These guys, I believe, also help somewhat in building out my naval, um, what you call that, my arm logistics. It's already at 13%, woohoo. So we still need a lot more. And, well, the irony is I have all these territories. How many provinces do I have right now? 122 ports, 108 provinces. These guys have 6 and 11. Uh, these guys have 10 and 4. The Germans have 35 and 37. Yet, with an enormous fleet, and I'm not exactly sure how they're funding that, but, well, I guess these provinces are just extremely profitable. They are able to get a yearly naval budget of 84, sorry, 83 billion. Versus my 44 billion. Yet I have a lot more provinces and no time to develop them because I'm constantly at war. So I think that what I might need to do is... Um, oh, hold on. I completely missed this. Yes. <laughs> this is not going to work out. 
Uh, what I was going to say is I need to try and push somehow into these territories and see if I can find something to fight. Even if it's 1DD, yeah, I'll take it. Um, you, Breach Creeper, go do something useful. Go fight something. Because I need to find and fight the British and the Spanish if I want to have any way of ending this war anytime soon. And by the looks of it, we're just going to have to send the Cursed Fish out to the channel. Ideally with some friends that have more firepower, but uh, yeah, I don't have a whole lot of friends that have more firepower. Because the, let's say the battleships, the line of the, the, the ship of the line battleships, they all got sunk. So the only one I have over here is an Enigma Hunt from 1942, and I still really want to refit that one. Um, we do have the Grumpy Guy Gamer over in the Yellow Sea in Port Arthur, but it's basically a home defense ship. This thing, if something shows up here, is going to give them a very hearty welcome with its 17 inch, sorry, 15 inch guns. And, well, I got the Ming Chen, which is over in Shanghai. Like, it really does not need to be here. If you want to do something useful, head over there and join that invasion fleet. Otherwise, I'm going to need you over there in the channel. Now, that's going to be it for this episode. A bit of a shorter one, but I, the last two episodes ran almost an hour or even slightly longer. So I'm going to cut this one slightly early. Hope you guys are still enjoying the campaign. With France out of the picture, there's definitely more terrain up for grabs. Definitely in Africa. Perhaps also over here in the Caribbean. And I'm pretty, uh, delighted to take over the rest of the territories here. Leaving only really Puerto Rico for the um, the Soviets, but I might be able to take that later. If I'm able to take this and the rest, then basically the entire Caribbean is mine. Which I think is a very good development. Anyway, enough chatter. Thank you for watching, hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon for more videos.